Ace Magic have recently been made an easy target due to having malware on the mini PCs. Rather than jump onto the bandwagon of hate, we've decided to review and give this unit a fair chance. Is this updated version of the AD08 worth getting? Let's find out. Welcome to Team Pandori. Subscribble. This box here came in the post. A review sample of the Ace Magic AD08. We're not being paid for this review, and as always, we're not being told what to say, and all thoughts of this product are our own. According to the box, this is a mighty product, and it's by Ace Magic. Let's have a look at the back of the box. So apparently this mini PC is good for creative design, enjoying games, and working efficiently. And the one that's been sent is the grey one, with 32 gigs of RAM and half a terabyte of NVMe. There are three modes we can use depending on the situation, either silent, auto, and performance. But what does this mean? And there it is. So this here is one of the largest mini PCs we reviewed to date. And the unique design reminds of a mini version of a tower PC armed with RGB lighting. Here's the manual, with multiple languages. So according to this manual, the AD08 is a box and has VESA bracket support. This manual is clearly made for another computer and put in here as an afterthought. Outside that, it's just the usual stuff. Boy. We also got a European style power lead. It's a kettle type, so we can change this with one that works in our country. A HDMI cable, under one meter in length. And here's the power brick. It's a switching type, so you can use it in America as well as Europe. And it outputs at 19 volts, 6.3 amps, and a maximum of just under 120 watts. Feels pretty sturdy too. So let's have a closer look. Just remove this plastic. Just like how I get my blow of dolls. This is the grey mini PC in all its glory. We have the word mighty pasted on the air vents. But if we look towards the top, we have the uh, knob. Or we can select between silent, auto and performance. This also doubles up as a power switch. On the front we also have a 3.5mm audio jack, two USB 3.2 ports, and a USB Type-C. Moving to the back now we've got Kensington, a quality assurance sticker, DC power in, Ethernet LAN, two HDMI ports, two more USB 3.2s, and a pinhole for a bias reset. And on the bottom, a whole lot of nothing. Let's get to the size comparison. The AD08 is much larger than the Geekcom A5. And it makes the GMK Tech K6 look like a younger brother. And is the ZX01. A Nintendo Game Boy. An average sized banana. And everyone's favorite, a Roy Bosch tea bag. The Ace Magic AD08 is approximately nine Roy Bosch tea bags big. Let's have a quick look at the specs. This mini PC uses a top tier i9 CPU. With 14 cores, we're very excited to see what this is capable of, and hopefully the Iris High GPU can perform in games. As this one is an i9 chip, we would have liked to see some DDR5, and also a better display port. After inserting a compatible cable, then running through the initial Windows questions for languages, we're straight in. And this is not a clean install of Windows. We have this RGB lighting control software to control our lights inside our mini PC. Automatic, on, Rainbow, Breathe, and Cycle. And also, Google Chrome is installed. Chrome can say things such as passwords and credit cards. With a compromised system, it's possible to lose a fortune. A clean install of Windows should only have the Edge browser. We checked through all the Chrome settings, and in this case, everything was okay. We also ran it through some anti-malware tools, but we got the green light from Arkill, Hitman Pro, and Malwarebytes. After connecting to the internet via Wi-Fi, we have Windows 11 Home fully activated. So now we can use Windows Update and use Ninite.com for some free software. It's very easy to do, just click the boxes for what you want, then hit Get Ninite. Everything gets automatically installed and you're ready to go. Well, that's what we thought, until we saw this. Lines like this appear when you have a poor HDMI cable. The included cable cannot provide a steady 4K at 60Hz. Changing the cable for one that we got with a different mini PC sorted this issue altogether. So now we can get productive with a bit of office. We can create 2D artwork with software such as Photoshop or Krita. 
create some music with FL Studio. Or even work with DaVinci Resolve with 4K video. We can actually use Intel Quick Sync, and using this in combination with the fast NVMe stick, scrubbing through timelines looks effortless. To be honest, video production with this rig would be quite a joy, until we hit an error whilst rendering. As it's appeared while processing data, it could be due to low quality NVMe or memory. Using this for shopping works fine, and this computer is going currently for $599 on Amazon. We can stream video on Amazon Prime, Netflix, and 4K in YouTube works swimmingly. Before we test out the games, here's some benchmarks. We got some decent scores from our NVMe and Crystal Disk Mark, showing us that we're in fact using PCIe Gen 4. Moving on to Geekbench, not only is the multi-core score lower than the 12650H, but every Ryzen mini PC had a higher OpenCL score. TimeSpy demonstrates that this i9 can compete against many of the Ryzen chips when it comes to CPU performance, which may give it an edge in production. In the next room, approximately 20 meters from the Wi-Fi router, we've got a decent signal. Let's connect our Bluetooth controller. No problems here. 2D games like Among Us run fine, and even at 4K resolution, we can still achieve a full 60fps. Here's Broforce. King of Fighters 15 at full speed. Dota 2 at 1080p best settings only just manages to clear 60 FPS. It is definitely playable, but we expected more from an i9 processor. And if we lower the resolution to 720p, it gives us 88 FPS. Yes, indeed. Counter Strike 2. 1080p medium, running around 40 FPS. Seven twenty P gives us a slight boost, but running fifty FPS in an esports game is laughable. And it's Overwatch too. And Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven. Ten eight P low settings gives us a lackluster twenty FPS. And even when lowering the resolution, things don't improve much. When it comes to emulation, you'd think that this computer is powerful enough to run PlayStation 3. However, this was not the case, and Ridge Racer 7 had issues even getting into the game. Wipeout HD Fury, on the other hand, managed to load up, and it was playable, until we hit an error. Earlier we had issues starting Dota 2 and Vulcan, so this could be a problem with the Intel GPU drivers. We also tried to emulate Mario Odyssey, and this system failed to impress. We're getting around 90% speed, with pauses every 2 seconds. Even though the specs seem much higher than the 12650H, there were no improvements over it in gaming. Checking the temperatures after a quick game of Rocket League, it shows us that the system is indeed thermal throttling. If we restart the computer, going to BIOS, we can see the power limit 4 is set to 115 watts. This is actually to spec, but as our system is having temperature issues, lowering this should cool it down. Now in Rocket League we have similar FPS, no thermal throttling, and over 20 degrees cooler. If we take a look at the promotional material, it states that we should move the knob while changing tasks. But the thing is, on this model, it does not change TDP. All it does is adjust the fan profile, so we can manually aid in cooling on the fly. But even in performance mode, that's where we hit thermal throttling. At idle in auto mode, it's actually barely audible, extremely quiet. Pulling just over 25 watts from the wall. And at load in performance mode, it's much noisier. Pulling just over 82 watts in Cinebench. 
Pulling off the side panel of this mini PC is extremely easy. It's held together by some small magnets, and we can quickly access the NVMe and the memory. The DDR4 included is something by Juhor. Two sticks, 32 gigs in total, and underneath that a 2280 NVMe stick with a heatsink. And this NVMe is by Rayson. Having unreliable NVMe may lead to losing valuable data or even having a system that won't even boot up Windows. Outside the NVMe option, we can also add a 2.5 inch SATA drive. Just need to unscrew this and slide it in. Here's the BIOS. Let's just flick through some of the options. A secure boot if you want to play some Valorant. But we're going to boot Batacero from the SSD. Batacero Linux is a front end where you can easily load up and play your favorite emulated games. On version 38, the Wi-Fi network is found and works out the box, but Bluetooth is currently incompatible, so for a wireless controller, you'll have to whip out a USB dongle. Let's test out some systems. First up, Commodore Amiga. MS-DOS Sega Saturn Sega Dreamcast Sega Model 3 PlayStation 2 Nintendo Wii and Xbox. So while emulation in Batacera is quite decent, we decided to use Windows a bit more, and surprise, Avast found something. Attached to an Ubi shutdown batch file, SNHJ malware was detected. We submitted this to VirusTotal, and it was found only by two antivirus tools, so there's a good chance that this may be a false positive. We reinstalled Windows 11 Home from scratch using the Microsoft Creation Tool, which gave us a virus-free, fully activated operating system. And then after using Windows Update and trying to find drivers online, we were left without Wi-Fi and many pieces of hardware without drivers. Even the Ace Magic website has none available to download, but we were offered another version of Windows 11. After downloading this file and using the USB stick, everything installed successfully. It was much cleaner than the initial install we had at stock. All of the hardware, including Wi-Fi, was working, there was no Chrome on the desktop, and no viruses were detected from the Ubi shutdown batch file. While this all sounds like a great step in the right direction, Ace Magic provided Windows 11 Pro instead of 11 Home, which we need to activate our machine. After messing around for a few hours, we did find a website that shows us how to convert your install to 11 Home. It involves using RegEdit to change some keys, and then reinstall Windows 11 from Windows itself. Once the process has been completed, we'll have a nice clean install of Windows 11 Home. It's about time for the pros and the cons. The CPU in this system is extremely fast. We like that it comes with a 2.5 inch SATA bay, and emulation in Batacera is a joy once installed. But for a mini PC at $799 RRP, we cannot ignore the overall poor quality. The hardware choices, lack of drivers, and software issues give the image that Ace Magic just doesn't care about its customers, and we can see more of this in their marketing. Excellent gaming performance, high FPS. Let's face it, 
this computer is being completely missold. Perhaps if it was matched with a GeForce GPU, it would indeed have excellent gaming performance, or if it had reliable NVMe and memory, this would be an excellent video editing machine. If you are looking for a cheap Intel mini PC for work, we'd definitely advise you to look elsewhere. This one from GMK Tech, for example, has 8 cores, performs slightly worse in gaming, but is sold for half the price. This Geekom A5 can also be had for under 400 bucks, but with better emulation support for both PlayStation 3 and Switch. And at the same price as the 8008, you can grab the GMK Tech K8, which has the Ryzen 8845HS, includes AI support, and is much better when it comes to games. We really wanted to like this mini PC, but unfortunately, there is no magic here. If you think we were too harsh in this review, please explain in the comments down below. Because even this game here in the background needs 720p for full speed. I'm John Luke. <laughs> yeah, I know you are. And I give out massages to girls at the McDonald's car park on the docks. Okay. If you'd like to support our work, we have a Patreon, and also have a few more videos on our channel that may interest you. This has been New Chicken of Team Pandori, and I'll catch you on the next one. Ta-ra! I would rather open Beverly's box.